The country's top health officials on the Hill today saying that science is guiding the race for a coronavirus vaccine, not politics. Here's Dr. Fauci. We feel cautiously optimistic that we will be able to have a safe and effective vaccine, although there is never a guarantee of that. And so as these trials go on, we predict that sometime by the end of this year, let's say November or December, we will know whether or not these are safe and effective. Dr. Mati Shlashwayo Davis joins us now. She is an infectious disease physician at the Washington University School of Medicine, and we are so thrilled to have her back. Uh, Dr. Davis, let's put timelines aside for a moment. How effective and how widespread would a vaccine have to be for us to get back some sense of normalcy, those date nights again? Good to be back, Allison. No martinis, but we'll get there, girl. Um, so, you know, we're here. <laughs> And, and in today's these Senate hearings were really encouraging, actually, because a lot of what scientists have been saying is starting to really come to the fore as far as letting the science um, lead. As far as vaccines go, the phase three trials do need to be seen through to completion. We do need a safe and effective vaccine. And once we have that, the most important part will be the rollout and the and, and the implementation. That's the part that now a lot of us are most interested in to make sure that those communities that are most vulnerable, that are most at risk, are not left behind. We know that those communities involve our Black, Latinx, and Native American communities. So to me, the next step as to whether we do a good job with this is to what we do after we have the data, and that data has been properly vetted by advisory boards and um, uh, med medical professionals and public health experts across the country. The Johnson and Johnson vaccine that's moving into phase three clinical trials will require just one shot instead of two. And it doesn't need to be stored in extremely cold temperatures like some of the others. How big of a deal are those two things? Do they make a huge difference? You know, it's an excellent point because we have vaccines that we have to, you know, work with right now that are given in multi steps, um, you know, two shots, sometimes three. We also deal with vaccines that do have to be refrigerated in the way that you're talking about. But given where we are right now with this pandemic and also the fact that we don't want this to be um, something that only we can have access to here in the U.S., right? This is a global issue. And there are countries that have um, limited resources and will need a product that is as simple and as easily accessible as possible. So if John and Johnson & Johnson are able to get such a vaccine through phase three clinical trials, it would be huge to have something that can be given in one simple shot and also didn't have some of the limitations that that type of refrigeration requires. Today, CDC Director Robert Redfield said about 90 percent of the U.S. population is still vulnerable to getting COVID-19. What should the public take away from a statistic like that? What should we be doing this fall to protect ourselves as much as we possibly can? We need to be listening to everything that has been said by public health experts up to this point. As tired as we're, we are of hearing the same messages over and over, including from me, it's about masking. It's about washing your hands for at least 20 seconds and avoiding touching your face. It's about social distancing. Beyond that, it's about, you know, accepting the data that's come out through the summer about how crowded places increases the, um, the risk of transmission. Um, but beyond that, there's been all this talk about herd immunity and kind of leaning into that. I think what that tells us is that we need to take a step back from that, especially since there's science now to suggest that people who've had mild, even mild cases of uh, coronavirus have had long-term health implications, including heart disease, um, that we may see much longer than the acute period that they're infected by. So I think what this says is that, once again, we need to be looking at prevention. We need to be caring about our communities, not just ourselves, and we need to continue to listen to the public health and medical experts across the country who do this work and have our best interests at heart. Dr. Davis, so thrilled you came back. I'm going to uh, put a, a martini incentive to get you to keep joining us. What if we call it a vaccine a teeny? And when we finally have a vaccine, people are getting vaccinated. We're getting back to normalcy. We'll celebrate with a cocktail. Listen, if it comes to my door, it's on. I'll bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Thanks so much, Dr.
Dr. Davis. We'll see you soon. Stay healthy and well. Thank you. You too. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.